heading out of Port Grimaud. Well, we've been boating in Cannes in almost 31 degrees sunshine, but now we're gonna drive this boat back to Monaco. And this is the perfect example of all weather boating. So we have a rain front in front of us. It's gonna be rain the whole entire day for us. Let's see if we can catch a break with some sun in between. But this is what an oxbar is all about. Take the boat in any conditions, any weather, and enjoy a day out at sea. So we've been driving now for half an hour and uh, I wanted to share a few hints for this sort of all way driving. One distinct feature of the Oxenbar 37 cross cabin is the window, and it's actually leaning a bit forward. The reason for having this windscreen leaning a bit forward is actually that driving the boat, whilst driving the boat, the wind is actually helping to keep off water from the windscreen. So you actually don't need to run your wipers that much. Driving in head seas, I want to give you two hints. One, if your boat is equipped with an active trim, you can go and set the settings one or two notches lower so you get the engine to trim down a bit. Addition to that, you can also be trimming down the bow of the boat. Doing so, you will actually be cutting the waves more and you will get a way more comfortable ride. As a responsible driver, it's always you, the captain, that selects the speed your vessel is traveling with. So always ask your passengers, if they're comfortable with the speed, if they feel safe on board, or if they want to go either faster or slower. But remember, it's always the captain that sets the speed. And before that, Mother Nature will set the speed you're able to drive it. One distinct feature all Oxenbars have is that they stay very true towards their heading. This is especially beneficial when you're driving in choppy seas or really bad weather conditions. What I see some of our boaters, and even Oxfordians, because they come from other brands, is that they usually, when they're driving, they do minute changes, and they turn the boat, and they turn the steering wheel every few seconds. Don't do that, because you don't need to do that. I know it's built-in reflex from your old boats, but an Oxford really just wants to stay true, and the hull wants to stay neutral. Let the boat do it for you, so you can relax more as a captain on boat. Unpredictable weather conditions. That is what driving Oxapars in is all about. The weather forecast yesterday showed that there would be no rain whatsoever on our trip over to Monaco. Well, we woke up this morning in some really, really nasty rain. Well, for us, this is all what Oxapar driving is all about. So you can always choose to opt to go at whatever locations you want to go in whatever weather conditions you want to go in. So again, we came across the weather front, so behind you, you see there's a thunderstorm behind us and there's some heavy rain behind us and in here the sun is out. So, whether it be wind, rain, whatever, an Oxopar 37, the cross cabin, is what this all-weather boating is all about. If the weather turns, close the roof, close the doors, you're ready to go. When the sun comes out, open up everything and you're ready for some really nice sun lounging out in the sun. So we're actually one hour ahead of time on our rendezvous with our Italian dealers in Monaco. So this boat is going into the Genoa boat show and we thought, hey, let's make the best out of it and let's just make a walkthrough video as we're waiting for our guys to show up. Sun lounging is everything what the Mediterranean edition is all about. And the foredeck of the Oxopar 37s is one of the best places to spend your time on the water. What we actually did compared to the traditional seating you can get on the 37s, we have now extended the sunbathing opportunities in the front. So we have a wider sun deck in the front and a longer sun deck in the front. There's ample storage underneath the sun pad. 
and we're also added cushions on top of the gullwing doors. So now you can choose different locations where to spend your time out on the water. You can also, of course, equip the boat with a sunshade so that you can be completely sheltered out of the water. One thing interestingly, we left Port Grimaud Accidentally, we actually forgot to cover up the Mediterranean upholstery. So this is a waterproof upholstery. So it gets a bit damp, but it dries really, really quickly. So, of course, you should never leave out any of your upholstery out into the open for the sun and the water and rainwater to destroy it. So one thing that the 37s are well known for, and actually the 28s and the 45 as well, is the walk around ability of the boat. So anywhere you walk, if you follow me, you can walk freely inside a sheltered area all around the boat. So there is no real uh, hassle to get from the front to the back or move around. In addition to the Mediterranean seating in the front, we also have the Mediterranean, of course, extended into the back. So you're getting additional fender cushions, for you to lounge and sit relaxed uh, with your friends on the aft deck. And of course, also here, you can have the option of a sunshade. Addition to that, for those that want to do occasional fishing, we have a fish pole and fish target holders as option. We're also having this very sturdy water ski frame available as an option, and now also small transom gates. But let's now more or less have a look into the interior and what we've done further with the Mediterranean edition inside. One of the key features on the Mediterranean edition on the 37 cross cabin is also this sofa. Before we had just one person seats, two of them, but now more or less, so for if you wanna relax, this is actually a really nice vantage point for the driver to just be relaxing. But if you want to be more attentive to your guests on board. You just adjust this one and you have a full nice sofa to enjoy. Actually, small guy like me, I can also squeeze in from here. So now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people sit in great comfort. Open up the sunroof, open up the doors. Let's do that actually. And you will be outside in that sense, even though we're inside of a cabin boat. Let's also have a look at the front cabin. So what we've now done for the model year 2023 is that we actually also extended the Mediterranean edition into the front cabin. So now you have really nice surroundings also inside of the front cabin. This is now, uh, to me, a great extension of the indoors with the outdoors. Again, if this were a traditional front cabin, we're sitting secluded from the out outdoors, secluded from people that are sun lounging in the front. But with this and the Goldwing doors on the Oxypar 37s, you just easily open it up and now you're fully connected with the elements. You get a nice breeze running in through the cabinet and this actually becomes a bit of a sun lounge in the shade. This version is now with a fully open L sofa configuration. You can also have as an option an enclosed toilet, but with the full L lounging sofa, there's still a toilet on board as standard. It's just hidden underneath in here. So for those that occasionally need a toilet for their kids, this is a perfect solution for them. And for those that want privacy, just take the option for the separate toilet and you have your own privacy. So the helm will probably be the number one position you want to get acquainted to on an Oxapart 37. So in our philosophy has always been that we want to be driving an Oxapart fully standard, fully upright standard so that your knees can actually bend if the weather really turns nasty. My favorite position is a lean back position where I can more or less then adjust the steering wheel, lean back to the bolster and having a comfortable ride, but still standing on the floor so I can actually feel the boat move around. Of course, with the Mediterranean edition, as with the standard seats, you can flip down the bolster and you can also be seated down and driving. So those are the three key things that we have important in the philosophy behind an Oxobar. Secondly, what is important is also the visuality and the visibility from the helm position. So the captain of the boat always needs to have an uncluttered view of his surroundings. That is for us 
very important. Addition to that is also that we want for the captain to have a very uncluttered view also on the dashboard. So we have actually removed a lot of unnecessary things and gadgets from the dashboard, integrated them into our screens and kept only the essential gear on the dashboard. So again, one way of creating a more relaxed sensation for you as a driver behind the steering wheel because more or less if there's an issue with the boat the electronics will notify you about it and more or less this will make you a more relaxed and confident driver. When it comes to visibility of course we haven't forgot our passengers. So wherever you would be seated on the Oxopart 37 now especially with the Mediterranean you will have a lot of vantage points and open air views out from the, these very big windows. Mercury has actually came out with a new digital throttle system. And one of the key features is that you have a quick start button. So pressing this button starts one, two, three, how many engines you want. Also, you have the trim, active trim profile already also included in here. So for here, you can easily adjust what sort of active trim setting you want. We're on board an Oxopar. So what's the number one thing we always want to do in an Oxopar? It's of course the driving. So, one thing with driving Oxopars, uh, some of you already know, really low planning threshold, and they are really easy to take up on the plane. You can even take the boat up to the plane like I just did in mid corner, no problem whatsoever. And you can easily adjust speed to the conditions. So, whether it be 20 knots, 30 knots, or whatever, uh, you never need to go full throttle in order to get the boat up on a planning speed. Also, what the boat is doing, uh, is that it's actually, or we can actually show it to you. So I'm actually going to be slowing down. First one thing, we're already on planing speed. I'm going to be putting it full neutral. And now if the cameraman follows the pictures behind, there's really no wake coming from the behind. And also additionally, what it's not doing, it's never digs down the stern when you take the boat out of the plane. So the boat always acts in a neutral way. But let's take the boat up to speed again. And let's do it in a bad way, where you can actually see the difference between many of our competitors. So let's just keep a steady pace of four to five knots, not do anything too much. Uh, already, you see that the boat keeps a true heading, so I don't need to be steering the boat. And let's take the boat up to speed slowly. And at some point, let's say 10 knots, many boats usually start digging down the stern, the bow starts to rise, you don't have any visuality over the windscreen and the boat starts to snake. And again, this boat just keeps a true heading and just keeps on going. And we just gradually increase the speed, 12 knots, 13 knots, 14 knots, 15 knots, completely undramatic, and now we're up on planing speed. So the Oxapart 37 already starts planing at around 18 knots. But the best fuel efficiency you will be getting out of the hull is somewhere a bit above 20 knots. So what an Oxapar is all about is also when we develop new models like the 37 is that we built in or we were able to figure out a way how we can drive the boat in speeds between 20 up to 32 knots with the same liter per nautical mile fuel consumption. And that is pretty unique. So it's not anymore the boat telling you what speed you need to be driving. You're selecting the speed you want to drive in also, of course, taking into consideration the conditions you're driving in. Again, something that makes already experienced captain more confident driver and a non-experienced captain makes him feel safe piloting an Oxford Park. So, cruising around 23, 24 knots, we're doing something around 2.7 uh, on fuel economy. We might be even be able to get it down to 2.6, something like that. Yes, now we're doing 2.6 with a small adjustment on the active trim. So that is also something I encur encourage people to be trying different uh, positions on the active trim. So up on the planing speed, I'm going to tell the camera guy to hold on a bit because I'm going to be doing a bit of turns with the boat. So one thing also we're doing now 28 uh, 28, 29 knots, that you can always turn the boat with great confidence and the boat will never do anything surprising. So just keep going through the turn and actually what the Mercury 
uh, Mercury has actually incorporated an auto throttle system that keeps the speed almost uh, <clears throat> almost to the same speed you were when you went into the turn. So it does actually means that I don't need to add more throttle when I go into a turn. And then when I go out of a turn as well, I just steer the boat straight and the boat returns to the speed I had before. So these are critical things because I've seen so many people go into a turn, more or less taking off the speed, going into a turn, and then pulling up the speed because they need to be turning, otherwise the boat slows down the speed. And then when they turn forward and they let the boat go for a while, they're actually driving faster than they were uh, going into the turn. So again, what Mercury has done here is, I would say, finding an on paper easy solution, but still that just works, 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 and makes driving so much more easier. And this compared, or I would say this paired with the right boat makes for an exceptional ride. So let's get up some more speed. We're actually now driving into Villefranche, uh, one of my favorite locations and a really picturesque harbor. And for me to do cruising speed of 32, 33 knots, there's a small job, but nothing to worry about. It's actually pretty nice to be cruising around in 2.7, 2.8 liters per nautical miles, and even doing the 32, 33 knots. And I'm going to go to do the turn again. So this time to the left, the same thing. So I just go into the turn and I can actually turn pretty strong if I want to, and then just turn myself back again and the boat is picking up the same speed again. So this is actually really a good example of confident driving, but also effortless driving in that sense. And this is what driving up cars are all about. Fuel efficient driving, driving in comfort, arriving, well, if I can use one of the, uh, one of one superlative, arrive in style. Because wherever you show up on an Axo Park, you will be recognized that you're on board an Axo Park. Because of our own design and the features on our boats, that have been replicated, copied, and emulated. For the competitors looking into what we do, there's a saying, copying is the sincerest form of flattery. For me, we're ready to take that on. Um, and what still, as a part of our mission statement, is that we're always open for new competitors to find more and better innovative solutions. If we haven't been able to come it up we welcome people that do so, all in order to get more boaters out on the water, all in order to make boating easier and more fun, and more fuel efficient also added to that. So let's take the boat out of the plane again. So now I'm going to do a crash stop at 30 knots. So I'm just pulling off and now he's turning back. And just try to have a look how the wake is coming behind the boat. There is actually no drama whatsoever. The boat actually keeps the true heading again, and now we're just at a very nice, calm uh, standstill. So these are key features that we build into the boats because we really take serious calculations and thoughts into making a boat that has a low center of gravity. Because the low center of gravity also actually helps you to enjoy your time out on the water more. Because we have a low center of gravity on our boats, this also means that the boat doesn't want to be bobbing too much sideways in the waves. So the higher, let's say it this way, the lower center of gravity you have, the less momentum you have for the boat to roll. The higher you have center of gravity, the more rolling you will be starting to see. So that is usually why all flybridge boats and bigger boats are usually seen with sea keepers because they will actually not be comfortable to be at anchor. On an Oxopar, on a 37, on a nice day out, actually there is no need whatsoever to have a sea keeper as a stabilizer because the boat will just gently bob around. Coming to how the boat actually goes so nicely up on the plane and how it comes down out of the plane, how it actually tracks so straight, is also down into how we've designed the hull. So the hull is very long, it has a sharp bow, this actually elongates the hull and also then together with the low windage, so we have a low side profile of the boat, 
keeps the boat going straight, but also additionally, uh, because we have a very um, well calculated center of the mass, so the boat is very balanced from the bow to the stern. This also means that it's not stern heavy or transom heavy in that sense, or bow heavy in, in any way. So just pulling up the throttle, the boat just jumps out of the water because also additional to the uh, two steps that we have. So these two steps, not only do they add more stability to driving the boat, not only do they also uh, add the, the comfort on board that the boat actually wants to, to drive in a certain position, what it actually also then adds to is the fuel efficiency. So the number one functionality of a twin-step hull is to suck in air under the hull and in that way the air bubbles that go underneath the hull acts as lubricant and from there we can then also lower the fuel, fuel economy on our boats. All our oxopars are always with twin-step hulls. No matter what options you select on an Oxopar 37, we're sure you will find something that suits your own personal needs. Whether it be an aft cabin, whether it be a multi-storage solution, whether it be an open aft deck or a wet bar. This is one thing that is the key features of Oxopars, that we offer this different type of modularity to our customers so that it can better benefit them for the usage of the boat. Also one reason why we don't spec our boats fully equipped from the very beginning, because we still see that we have five out of 10 or, or half of our customers that don't need dual screens. They don't need toilets They don't on the smaller boats. They don't need boat thrusters on the smaller boats. There are some options that they actually don't need. So why should they be paying for it? That is one of the reasons why we can keep the prices down on an Oxopar, keep the prices also very competitive against any of our competitors, but also the one key thing of an Oxopar is that it actually retains a really great retail sale value. So this is also important when you make your buying decisions and you go around and you ask and you check what sort of boat you would be wanting to buy. Also check the retail value of these boats on the second-hand market. Driving this boat from Port Grimaud over to Monaco. I shared a few hints of how to drive the boat. And these are the small things that make the differentiation between a comfortable ride and a supreme ride. So you as a captain of the boat, practice and try to test these small things out. Adjust the trims on the engine, adjust the trim taps when the weather is bad. In normal conditions like we have right now, because the weather front is actually left a bit behind us, here you don't really need to do that. But when the weather turns bad, Take time to practice and see how you can make the boat work more towards you. So I really hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of the Oxopar 37 Mediterrana and for you to get small hints of how to become a better driver and also to find the functionalities and the philosophy behind Oxopar. Stay tuned, there will be a lot of more footage coming out from Oxopar's media production in the next months to come. And we really want to thank you all for being such great followers on our social media networks. See you on the water.